Red light one number one? That makes zero sense. Come over here, let's explain something. We will talk about rock curves and lift charts in this little session here. And they could become really a great tool if they are not already, but many people find them a bit confusing. So let's start on rock curves first. And it's actually kind of easy to, to create a, a curve like this for a, a model you create. Uh, you put the true positive rate on this axis and the false positive rate on that one. True positive means what is the percentage of your data points your model correctly identified as a positive, of your positive data points. And false positive rate is kind of like the false alarms. Out of the negative ones for a binary classifier, how many of them have been falsely um, identified as positives? So, and how do we actually create all those, those lines here? Well, you just take your data set where you actually know the outcome, those actuals here, and then you take your models and apply those models on this data set, create the predictions, and you also will get typically a confidence level for all those predictions, and you sort all your predictions according to this confidence level for the cast positive. And then you start basically going line by line, start with the first line here and say like, okay, you start here at the bottom left corner, and if it's actually a positive, and we correctly say it's a positive, that means this adds to your true positive rate, so we go one step up. Same for the next row here, one step up. But here now, this is actually a negative. And we say it's a positive, so that's a false alarm, so we go one step to the right. And you do this for all your data points, and then a curve like this will, will appear. And now, how can you use those curves to actually comparing models? So first of all, the perfect model would be something which is here at the top left corner. It looks like this. And you will never see this in the wild because, frankly, that would be very suspicious. Models typically never are that perfect. But you will get something like this. It should be above this green line, which would be a model which is just randomly guessing. And now you can, for example, say this red model here, with this curve, is actually less good than the orange and the purple one because it's, it's below the other curves across the board. But for the orange and the purple one, that's no less clear which one is actually better. And that actually depends on what we call the classification costs. So sometimes there's different costs for the type of errors you could make. And, well, I'm not going into the details, but it comes down to, depending on the cost, you can actually define a, a, like a linear curve like this one here, and the slope will be defined depending on those costs, and then you try to find a tangent, which is as much here to the top as possible, and then let's say the slope looks like this, now the purple one would be better, and if it looks like this, now the orange one would be better. But here's the thing. Not even I find this really intuitive, and I'm doing this for like 15, 20 years now, and most people I know don't like this either. So rock curves are great for a visual comparison for like ruling out models like the red ones. Um, you can actually even calculate something, the area under the curve, which darn, is the area under the curve, and that gives you like one simple number, which is a bit independent of the actual classification costs at the end. So those are the positive sides, but it's kind of hard to connect a rock curve to business value, and I personally find it also a little bit harder than necessary to find good candidates for thresholds, decision thresholds, based on this curve alone. Again, it's possible, it's just not very intuitive. So, good comparison tool, but some other drawings. Um, what are the alternatives? Okay, thanks, uh, whiteboard number one, whiteboard number two, please. One alternative I actually like to use is the so-called lift chart. Here, you start with the same table, you remember with, with, the, uh, with the confidence levels here, and now you actually put those, those rows here into, let's say, five buckets. Um, the top 20%, then the next 20%, and so on. And for each bucket, obviously, the last row has some confidence value, and those will become your decision thresholds at the end. So the first bucket are all the top 20% of the rows with a confidence value, let's say, of higher than 0.8. That depends on your model and your data. So, and now you could look at those 20% of your data points, and you can actually count or calculate how many of your positive cases have been covered by this bucket already. And typically, this is higher if your model is doing a decent job. So it's not going to be 20%, but let's say in this example, 45%. So that means I would only need to look into 20% of my data, but I would cover already 45% of my positive class, which is good, more than 20%, which would be random. Or I could look into the top 40%, I could get to 80% of my positive class. And here's the thing. That now I can directly connect to business value. So let's, for example, say this model should help you for making targeted campaigns for predictive lead scoring or something, marketing campaigns, some, something of that nature. Let's also say that you know your total campaign reaching out to all the people would cost you $1 million. But you also, based on your conversion rates and everything else, would estimate even if all people who could theoretically buy would buy, they would deliver also a revenue of $1 million. So nobody with more than two brain cells would ever do that. You're not spending one million to get one million. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. But 
what if you would actually only focus on the top 40% based on the model confidences? Because now you're only paying 40% of 1 million, which is 400,000, but you get 80% of the revenue, which is 800,000. So now all of a sudden, this is a good deal. And this is what I mean by lift charts are, in my opinion, much easier to connect actually, so you can connect the model and the predictions to the actual business value. Uh, hi Dan, thanks for, for stepping by. Um, and also it's kind of like easy to find a decent threshold value um, because you just look at the last row for each bucket and you know what is the cutoff point here. Um, only thing is that for that rock charts are a little bit better. Um, it's a little bit harder to compare different models with lift charts. I wouldn't actually recommend to do this in the first place. So if you really would like to connect this to the value, business value, find the thresholds, go with lift charts. Otherwise, whiteboard number one here has the rock course for you for model comparison, AOC, simple calculation. Both are great tools. Both should be used. Have fun with them. And thanks for today.